Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokov. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to cover one of the three major fatty acid catabolic pathways, and that's omega oxidation. And in this video, we're going to cover it in two parts. First, we'll actually see the omega oxidation pathway, which is pretty short and straightforward. But then we'll see what actually happens to that fatty acid once we've oxidized its omega carbon. We'll see how we generate energy from that. Now, omega oxidation can be important in one of two ways. One, there are some animals or vertebrates which actually use this more than others. But also, if you're a human, which you are presumably if you're watching this video, and you have a defect in one of the beta oxidation enzymes, then this pathway is going to become more important. Recall that beta oxidation is by far the most important of all the fatty acid catabolic pathways for humans. But if one of those four enzymes is defective, then this pathway, omega oxidation, is going to provide a little bit more of a contribution to energy than beta oxidation. Okay? Now, this pathway is going to occur in the smooth ER of the liver and kidney. So that's in contrast to beta oxidation, which occurs in the mitochondria, and then alpha oxidation, which we covered separately, that actually occurs in the peroxisome. And normally, omega oxidation is only going to occur on medium chain fatty acids, which generally are going to be fatty acids that contain between 6 and 12 carbons such as this one up here. This is a 12-carbon fatty acid called lauric acid. We're actually going to look at omega oxidation on lauric acid. And what we're going to see is there's three general steps in omega oxidation. The first one is catalyzed by a P450 enzyme. Usually you'll see this referred to as a mixed function oxidase. So notice that we're going to hydroxylate the omega carbon. So a few pieces of terminology here on fatty acids. This position right here in my mouse is adjacent to the carbonyl. This is my alpha position. Okay. The one adjacent to that right here, this is the beta position. In fact, in beta oxidation, this is the carbon that gets oxidized, which is why it's called beta oxidation. However, in any fatty acid, regardless of its length, the carbon that's most distal from the carboxylic acid, way out here, this is the omega carbon. Okay. So in a 12-carbon fatty acid, the 12th carbon is the omega carbon. In a 20-carbon fatty acid, the 20th carbon is the omega carbon. It's always the last one, the one most distal from the carboxyl. And so notice that's the position that gets hydroxylated by this mixed function oxidase. And that's why it's called omega oxidation here, because the omega carbon is getting oxidized. So the first step is a hydroxylation. In the second step, we have an alcohol dehydrogenase. So this carbon, this OH group, is going to get oxidized into an aldehyde. And so we take what would be called a fatty alcohol and convert it into a fatty aldehyde. Okay. So now our omega carbon has an aldehyde. And then the final step of omega oxidation is an aldehyde dehydrogenase. In this reaction, the aldehyde on the omega carbon gets oxidized into a carboxylic acid. Now, two things here. One, notice that the alcohol oxidation step, which is from the alcohol dehydrogenase, and then the aldehyde oxidation step from the aldehyde dehydrogenase, notice that in both of these steps we actually obtain an NADH. So this pathway is going to give us two NADHs, okay, which is energy yielding. And the second thing is, notice that each end has a carboxylic acid. That's why it's a dicarboxylic acid. Okay. Now, there's a slight advantage in that, and that advantage is that we can actually attach a coenzyme A, this right here, to either end. But for the uh, sake of this example, I'm just going to put it here on the right end, although it's symmetric and it does not matter. Attaching that coenzyme A here is, of course, going to be catalyzed by the fatty acyl CoA synthetase, or sometimes just called acyl CoA synthetase. Okay. This is the same acyl-CoA synthetase that attaches the coenzyme A on all fatty acids, but it can also react with dicarboxylic acids like this. So now what we have at this point is we have sort of a dicarboxylic acid, but one end is ligated to a coenzyme A. Now, the other end does not get a coenzyme A. Only one end gets it. The other thing is, despite the fact that we have a carboxyl over here, this fatty acid-like molecule can still undergo beta oxidation. 
Okay? And remember that each round of beta oxidation shortens this thing by two carbons. So for example, in the first round of beta oxidation, we'd cut this bond right here, and we'd of course get out an acetyl-CoA. That shortens it by two carbons, so now we should have 10, because remember we started with 12. Well, we go through a second round of beta oxidation, we get out another acetyl-CoA. Now we've shortened it to eight carbons. We can even count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We undergo another round of beta oxidation, so cut this bond right here, get out another acetyl-CoA, and we shorten it now to six carbons. Now this molecule right here has a name. They all have technically have names, but this one's more relevant. This is called adipyl-CoA. So when you have this molecule right here, this is adipyl-CoA. Now two things can happen to adipyl-CoA. One, it can go into its own catabolic pathway, which we're actually going to discuss in a separate video. We'll see how adipyl-CoA slash adipate are actually catabolized. Or this adipyl-CoA can undergo one more round of beta oxidation. Okay? And in that case, we'd cut it right here. We'd get out another acetyl-CoA. And now we'd shorten it down to four carbons. Now this molecule, if you look really carefully, you should have seen before. This is actually succinyl-CoA. Okay? A succinyl-CoA, recall, is an intermediate in the citric acid cycle, so either this adipyl-CoA can go into its own separate catabolic pathway, or it can be beta-oxidized one more time into succinyl-CoA, which can then enter the citric acid cycle, where it then undergoes some reactions, and of course we get energy out of that. So hopefully what you see right here is actually the omega oxidation part of this pathway is actually very short and simple. We just have three oxidation steps. One's a hydroxylation, and then oxidation to an aldehyde, and then oxidation to a carboxylic acid. Then we take this fatty dicarboxylic acid and basically run it through a pathway that's very similar, if not identical, to beta oxidation. So we ligate it to CoA only on one end, and then we put it through uh, several rounds of beta oxidation until we get it down to either adipyl-CoA, which can either go directly into its own catabolic pathway, or it can uh, go one more round in beta oxidation to produce succinyl-CoA, which can then go into the citric acid cycle. In the next video, we're actually going to see how we degrade adipyl-CoA, so join us then. But hopefully at this point, omega oxidation makes sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.